What's up everyone? Today I wanted to make a video about three countries I think are really great for freelancing. It's surprisingly hard to find a good list of freelancing friendly countries because a lot of those like quality of life score rankings, uh, they don't really consider the things that freelancers care about, which is not only, you know, good quality of life, but a good value for what you pay for that quality of life. And then one thing that people never talk about is the tax rate. Would living somewhere like Stockholm be great? Yeah, but you're gonna be paying more than half of your income in tax. So is it that great? I don't know. The final consideration is gonna be, can you move there easily? Because a lot of countries, you can just go on a three month tourist visa, but then after that you have to leave. So these are all gonna be countries you can pretty easily move to or get a residence permit for, and not only stay there, but stay there legally. Uh, anyway, let's get into the three countries or just three of the countries I think are really good for freelancing that I've kind of discovered in my past several years of researching this kind of thing. And before we get into it, these are by no means my top three. They're not the best three, but they are three that I think are really good that I just want to share with you. So, okay, let's talk about the first one, which is probably to no one's surprise, Thailand. Everyone knows Thailand has great weather, uh, especially people from the UK and the northern US love to move there. For me, it's a little bit too hot, a little bit too, I guess, hectic with all the motorbikes and stuff. But yeah, the two cities in Thailand people really love to move to are Chiang Mai and Bangkok. Now, Chiang Mai is going to be a little bit cheaper, a little bit more chill, but less international. And then Bangkok, of course, is, you know, a world of its own. Now, most people also know that Thailand is very affordable. You can get a place with a pool in Chiang Mai, especially for a few hundred a month. I'm gonna actually put on the screen some metrics for Chiang Mai and compare them to a city in the US. Now, I think I'm actually gonna use SF, which is not a good example of an average city, but it is the city where I live, so check it out. A comparison between SF and Bangkok, which again, we'll just use SF as our benchmark to compare different countries. You're gonna need around 3,000 to sustain an $8,000 lifestyle in Thailand. So roughly three times as cheap, if you wanna just use this top measurement. And then you can see that it goes into the specifics here and even more specific down here. Uh, the one that stands out to me is really the rent prices being 80% lower. So you can basically get an 80% better place if you're willing to live in Bangkok. So scrolling down to the thing most of us care about the most, how much is rent for one bedroom in the city center? Uh, well, you can see in Bangkok, it's going to run you about 663. And I think most people are going to want to live in the center. Now let's compare this to um, Chiang Mai, which is another if not even more popular location in Thailand. And I'm just gonna do it against SF again, although of course you can compare it to any city you want by going to numbeo.com. As expected, rent prices are gonna be 88% lower. Pretty insane when you scroll down and see. A one bedroom in the city center is gonna be about $423. Now, the final thing about Thailand tax wise is there's two different main strategies that people do to actually live there. Because if you're not aware, in most countries, you will arrive on a tourist visa, which will be about three months you can stay and then you have to leave. So how do you work around that if you want to actually move there? Well, the first thing people do is what's called a border run. So you just go out and then you come back in. You're not supposed to do it, but a lot of people do it. Now, I don't think this is actually the best strategy because it's not legal. And while they're, well, they're not very strict on it now, uh, because so many people do it, that could change in the near future. On top of that, if you're staying in Thailand, and this goes for most countries too, more than six months in the year, you are legally supposed to pay tax. Whether the country enforces that or not is up to them, but it does put you in a bit of a gray area because if they do choose to enforce it, well, you're kind of screwed. Now, if you want to go the legit way, you can just pay for what's known as a Thailand golden visa. That gives you the permission to live there for three years and pay no tax, but you do have to pay a pretty large upfront fee of around $15,000. Now to clarify, this Thai visa is actually called the Elite Easy Access Visa, and it actually lasts for five years instead of three for that 15,000. Now don't quote me on the no tax thing. It seems like it's more of a gray area that you don't have to pay tax. Refer to this right here. And you're gonna wanna do your own research instead of just listening to my word on this because I have not done it myself. 
I've just done the research. Next country on the list is actually going to be Hungary. Now, whether you've been to Budapest or not, this city is actually amazing. Uh, it's right in the center of Europe, so it's really easy to travel anywhere in Europe, and it's really good to have as a base because it's not only affordable, but a extremely beautiful city with classic architecture everywhere. Personally, maybe I'm a nerd, but I find that kind of inspiring and really fun. The English level is really good. <laughs> Hungarian language, though, is impossible, which you would probably want to learn a bit of if you're staying there for a longer amount of time. Okay, let's look at San Francisco and compare it to Budapest, Hungary. Well, rent prices are still going to be 85% lower than a place like SF, and you need a $2,500 to sustain an $8,200 lifestyle. So that is about four times as cheap in general. We're looking at cheaper actually than Bangkok, but a little bit more expensive than Chiang Mai. If we scroll down to the one bedroom in city center, we're looking at $526. But one of the best parts is actually the kind of visa they have. Even if you're not an EU citizen, you can apply for what's called a private enterprise visa. And what this allows you to do is live on a residence permit year round and stay in Hungary. And what you also get with that is access to Hungary's income tax rate, which is a flat 15%, which if you're coming from the US is extremely low because we have a progressive tax system that goes up to close to 40%. My final official country in the list is gonna be where I just chose to make my base, which is Ukraine. Now Ukraine is actually one of the lowest income countries in Europe. No offense, Ukrainians, it's just true. But what you actually get there is safety, I mean, relatively, and you get um, actually a very nice quality of life. The city of Kiev, where I live, is very European. It's not Soviet like you would expect, and the pressing, well, that is in parts, but not in the city center, and people are very nice. So you're getting a really good value all around. Now, if you're willing to go to a slightly smaller city in Ukraine, namely Lviv, Kharkiv, you can pay about half as much as Kiev in living costs. And the way I think of it is like you can pay for a year in a city like Kharkiv in a place like SF. So whether you want to save up and move over or just freelance and then save a ton, you can do both of those strategies. Now, obviously the winter in Ukraine is not that ideal, but with all the money you're gonna save, you can just travel um, as much as you want basically because you have all this left over. So you can go to Thailand for two weeks, you can go to Bali, you can fly back and you still got money in the bank. So that's one of the reasons I like it a lot. And finally, the tax situation in Ukraine, very, very good. You can get this thing called a private entrepreneur visa and you pay a flat 5% up to around 250,000 per year. So that's very appealing for a freelancer like me. Um, and you're gonna have no issues below that 250,000. Also getting a residence permit, very, very easy. Trust me, I'm doing it right now. Now, Kiev, obviously, cheaper than Budapest, very close to being on par with Chiang Mai. Uh, comparing it to that 8,200 versus 2,000, you're getting about four times as much value. And scrolling down to the apartment, rent prices in Kiev are actually not as cheap as you would expect. I mean, still very affordable, 583 for an average one bedroom per month. But Keep in mind that you're saving an additional 10% on tax as a freelancer. So that is really going to add up and probably offset that higher rent. Now, finally, let's look at SF versus uh, Lviv, which is a city in Western Ukraine. It's very similar to a city like Krakow. It's uh, very nice in general. And yeah, obviously we're seeing cheaper than Kiev here only 1500 so you're almost looking at five to six times cheaper uh, in terms of general cost of living and then your rent per month 351 in city center which is i can't remember exactly what chiang mai was but it's on par or a little bit cheaper and you're getting that kind of like european architecture living safety all the above for lviv so definitely a city a little bit off the beaten path but worth checking out especially if you're open to somewhere a little less common. 
So those are three of the countries I think are very good for freelancing. You might just want to put on your radar, whether you're already a freelancer or not. And if you're interested in this kind of like freelance remote lifestyle, go ahead and check out my Instagram, Aaron Jack. I'm posting kind of vlogs on my stories and posts all the time. So I try to keep it interesting and show you guys what it's really like and not just some dream fantasy lifestyle that I'm creating for Instagram. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and enjoyed that data. I will catch you guys in the next video and see you real soon. Bye.